I'm going to give him his flowers here. Shea Gilgis Alexander, 31 points, 4.8 rebounds, 5.5 assists, 1.7 steal, and one block per game. The only other player to do that in NBA history was Michael Jordan. What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of I Got Next Podcast. Uh, I am your host for this week, Tomer Zarli, your Clippers beat writer for Clutch Point. Uh, on my other side here, we got Julian Fadulian. Um, Thank video, you for getting my name right. Video, what, what should I call you? Video connoisseur? What do I call you? General Menace at the company. General Menace at the company. We'll call him that. Yeah. And then we have yeah. Jerry, who I would call the, I guess, Jack of all trades, because he does everything for us. Video, um, article content, um, does everything for us in there, you know. Speaking of Antoine James, why are you making that ugly ass face, bro? God, you're fired. It really freaks <laughs> out me out, man. Out of here. <laughs> Get him out. Get him out. That's more upsetting than anything that I have ever said. <laughs> let's let's not be too hasty, all right? Let's, let's... Yeah, you've been pretty out of pocket. Uh, but I do want to jump right into it. We have about two or three uh, weeks left in the regular season of the NBA. Um, I want to start with this because. Obviously, I covered the team. There was some big news this week with the injury of Paul George suffering uh, a sprained knee. Nasty-looking injury. Um, you know, from, from from what we understand, is they just called it a sprained knee. And uh, he'll be out for two to three weeks before he's reevaluated. That reevaluation schedule is scheduled for um, after the end of the regular season and before the first round of the playoffs, uh, assuming they don't fall to the play-in. So I'll give my take on this after. But um, what? How, how big, how impactful do you think this kind of injury is? Uh, for the West and for the Clippers specifically. Huge. He's half their core. That's it. Like he, he doesn't like there's a there's a good chance. And this is just two, three weeks before he gets reevaluated, right? Based on like previous injury history, there is a pretty large percentage chance that playoff P might not even see the floor um before he turns into playoff P. So without him, that's fifty percent of your entire team's business plan. You know what I mean? So Kawhi or not, whatever happens, I'm really worried about these Clippers without Paul George. Yeah, uh, I will just go and echo those sentiments too, man. Like that's literally the other half of what you guys have going on in L.A. And even with just Kawhi Leonard, I've seen a stat that you guys have a losing record with just Kawhi Leonard or one star Mm -hmm. is on the floor while the other one isn't. So, I mean, with – that secondary playmaker beside Russell Westbrook or, or even Kawhi doing it, like PG's been like, you can kind of call him like the core of what you guys do on both sides of the ball. And he's like 6'10", you know, make shots at a high level, great for himself and others, and he can guard the team's second or best uh, offensive player. So it's a it's a huge loss. Like I can see you guys dipping into that play in or even possibly out of the playoffs altogether at the worst yep. case scenario. Like he's That bad. spread is real narrow. That spread yeah. is real narrow between, like, what, 6 through 10? 11? 6 through even? 11, like, I would say, yeah. yeah. 6 one through 11, those, yeah. So, <clears throat> One of those really good teams is not going to make it, unfortunately. Um, yep. Right now, yep. the way we're looking at it, the, the Clippers are 24 and 14 with Kawhi and PG this season. They're 22 and, 22 and 13 with Kawhi, no PG. Um, and they're, uh, they're what, is, what is this season's record? Uh, eight and ten with Paul George and no Kawhi Leonard. So, um, <clears throat> when both of those guys are available, um, they can help a lot. They they, they win a lot. Uh, I think all time they're like eighty three and thirty five. So they win like seventy percent of the games. Um, look, I, I agree with both of you guys. It's pretty devastating. Um, I think if this came maybe a month ago, you'd you know be able to have that window to recover, um, be build yep. some momentum for the playoff. They would actually just been starting to play well. Yep. They'd won four four out of five, I believe. Um, so you know. Integrating Russell Westbrook has been has, has gone well, so it, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to replace him. I, I don't know that any one guy on the team can kind of replace what Paul George brings to the team. Uh, it's just a significant loss. So, um, I guess the, the best case scenario here is that he probably misses, um, you know, a week or so after the playoffs start. Um, hopefully, comes in late first round, early second. But uh, my understanding is that he's going to be out for quite a while. Uh, be, definitely beyond those yeah. two to three weeks, which which is unfortunate. So, um, I mean. Even if he comes back late, the logic says this. Like, if they dip, right, which they theoretically could, they're still, like, what, 10 games over 500 with just Kawhi, right? Uh, On the season, Um, yeah. 
on the season, right? But with 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 the momentum, the newness of the Russell Westbrook trade, all, all these different like kind of factors coming in, theoretically, they're statistically probably going to dip into the play-in, right? So before he comes back, likely they're going to need to face one of the Lakers, Mavs, or Warriors, or Timberwolves, um, and then after that is a first round against either the uh, Nuggets, Suns, or Nuggets, Grizzlies, um, Kings, Kings. Or, yeah. Right. And then even if they stay at the fifth, it's Kawhi alone with Russell Westbrook as the second best player playing against the Suns with possibly KD. I, I, there's there's almost a and by the time that Paul George comes back, they're what down two oh, down three one, who knows? So you know, it's looking real rough for them even making it out of the first round with this. This is probably side, a death nail. On the bright side though, I, I will just try to shed some optimism into the situation. At least you guys are one of the deepest teams, if not the deepest team in the NBA. No, they don't create for others how PG does and all the stuff that we highlighted for him. But having Robert Covington now being able to probably get more minutes here and there and knock down some shots, I think the going to play more minutes. Norman Powell's still out, but hopefully he's come back soon and kind of help carry this offense at least score. Norman Powell will be huge. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like At least having make those up guys that could actually get them through a potential first-round playoff series, depending on who they play. So it would just be yeah. real interesting to see where all the pieces fall for the Western Conference. Right, right. I agree with that. Um, but, yeah, big injury there. Hopefully the Clippers can kind of bounce back, because I would like to cover a long playoff run, personally. Um, moving on, though. Uh, something that has, has kind of caught the NBA by storm the last couple of games. Um, Austin Reeves is the greatest free-throw merchant on earth right now. Um, hey, he's man. This, he's this week's free throw merchant. I don't know if this changes week to week or something, but um, over the last four games, Austin Reeves has averaged 18 free throws a game, 53 total, more than Jason Tatum, Damian Lillard, and Jimmy Butler. Giannis Antetokounmpo, Shea Gilch, Alexander, you get, you get my point. He's, um, he's shooting a lot of free throws. Uh, and Monty Williams came out, ripped him, ripped, ripped the officials for saying, you know, we got out, out shot 46 to 20. Um, in, in the Suns' loss to the Lakers the other night. What do we make of this Austin Reeves, uh, you know, explosion, I guess, from the free throw line? I mean, he's, he's, he's been playing really well, but 18 free throws a game is, is Shaq-esque. You know what? LeBron's teams have this, like, Duke men's basketball trend of having one white guy <laughs> that ends up becoming, like, legit <laughs> number two. <laughs> He went straight from like Shane Battier to Delhi to actually. I feel like Alex. Like... Hey, put that in, put that in one of our games. Who are LeBron James's designated white guys? Like okay. Mike Miller, Shane Battier, Delhi, Alex Caruso. We'll play, we'll play that later. We'll play that later. Weasley is our king. You know, but honestly, I'd like Austin Reeves. For throughout this whole year has been a legit rotational player, right? It's good to see that he can step up. He's a physical dude for someone that's built like Jerry. So I don't know. Like he's he's rock solid, man. Weasley is our king, baby. Gryffindor for life. <laughs> hey, hey, you gotta chill. <laughs> you gotta chill, man. But he's an aggressive dude, man. He's an hey, aggressive guy. Trust me, I've been paying attention. I I love it. I mean, the fact that he's he has 54 free throws. I also seen a stat earlier on Twitter that Steph has like seven compared to his 54 in like the four or five game span, whatever it is. Like, it's insane. But overall, the dude's been playing like he deserves that $50 million contract for four years that he might come in in the offseason. And it's kind of ridiculous because he has the ball in his hands a ton. And Austin yep. Reeves is making plays. Rather than D'Angelo Russell doing it, like just the other game, not the one against Phoenix, but the game before, Austin Reeves has a, had a career high, 11 assists, and with 25 points. The dude's IQ for the game is actually pretty sharp. He shows in the tangibles every night. I love it. And obviously, well, I, LeBron on the floor allows him to kind of showcase this, and people are right. concerned if LeBron comes back, it's not going to be that way. It probably won't. But hey. Now, if I'm LeBron, I might look like Austin Reeves. Like, I can trust that kid a little bit more. Look what does LeBron James happens. do? How does LeBron James negatively impact Austin Reeves' growth? More at 11. He doesn't. Exactly. He doesn't. That's why I don't Caruso mean to, pathway, I don't, baby. I don't mean to call out anybody, but seeing Jason Williams say that earlier this morning on KJM kind of Name just had drop. me dumped out there. He's an additive. 
he doesn't subtract or divide from any team. It's LeBron. But go ahead, Tim. Go ahead, Tom. No, I'm. I, I mean, I, I, honestly, I'm speechless watching this because, like, obviously, I'm I'm in the market watching it. So, like, he's he's a really good player. He's he he has a knack for getting to the basket, and I think that's one thing that um, he doesn't get a lot of credit for. Is he actually attacks? He puts pressure on the on the basket. Puts pressure on the officials to make calls. And um, you know, he he's the other day he said I study guys like Joel Embiid. Uh, I think he mentioned James Harden, Trey Young, like. He mentioned right. those guys, and you know those are pretty notable foul merchants. Um, Wait, hit the well, well I, and 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 I, and I think like that's foul baiting, call baiting is kind of becoming its own technique now, right? Like it's oh, it, it, it's there's 100%. a, it's a game. right there, 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 there's there, there's a legit artistry and skill set to doing that, and if you're a dude in the NBA built like Austin Reeves and you're going up against like dudes that look like titans, and you're not scared to drive to the hoop and get physical, if you're an energy guy like Austin Reeves, that's totally believable if you're fearless like that. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> I think like Austin Reeves has shown that he is one of those role players that has a legit skill set that doesn't try to play outside of a system or, you know, fi- like, or, like find his own way. A lot of the times that's what happened to D'Angelo Russell. You know what I mean? So when you have a player that has an elevated skill set, has a specific thing that he's good at, drawing, drawing fouls, and then someone that plays in that same system, you get Austin Reeves. I think like he can find a legit contract on a team. I would also point out, too, that's like another pro of being like you know a three- to four-year college player. I believe he went to Oklahoma. Yeah. And back at Oklahoma, he was actually a yeah. pretty good player. Like, I, I actually watched some Oklahoma games, especially when Katie Cunningham was still at Still at uh, Oklahoma yep. State or whatever. State. I was kind of yeah. like, damn, this Austin Reeves kid could play. And for some reason, I kept catching Oklahoma games. And I was always like, damn, he's pretty good. He ends up getting drafted yep. for, I guess, the right situation. You know, the perfect situation for him to thrive in alongside a guy like LeBron, who's another yep. guy that you can just, whose brain you can pick at, you know? Yep. It's your Austin Reeves is, your buddy Heald's is. Like, you're, those three, four players, like, they're underrated, like, later in the draft, for sure. No, my man. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what to make of it exactly uh, as far as, like, his free throw totals because it's still astronomical. Like, he's shooting more free throws in the last four games than the Denver Nuggets did in the last three. That's just absurd to hear. Absurd to hear. I think that's just his game. Right. I but, think that's just his game. Okay, right, well, I'm, I'm going to finish with this one on, on this topic. Does he get that $50 million contract this offseason? Does someone pay him $50 million? I think he offers like a thirty, forty million dollar skill set for the right NBA team, um, and I think some team we will be willing to overpay for him. Simple as that. It's it's crazy that we even having this conversation, but <laughs> like Austin Reeves, fifty million, but nah, yeah, I mean, especially let's let's just paint this picture real quick. The Lakers get into the playoffs. They get to the w, the WCF. <laughs> Austin, like the third or fourth best player on the team, averaging high high teens and points, five six assists. You have to pay him. You have to give him the fifty mil. Learn right. from the Caruso mistake. Learn from the Caruso mistake. Well, we <laughs> you try to, but like if you do the math, right? NBA inflation. The mat, the super max contracts are like two hundred million dollars, right? Those are the versions of like the forty fifty million dollar contracts they had like fifteen years ago under the old CBA, right? Quarter of that is $50 million. Like the fractions make sense. Like the 25% of that amount is what you pay to really high end role players. And that's what Austin Reeves is showing. I think so. I need to see him do that into the postseason, though. Like, right, 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 right. Then I'm, I'm saying a team is going to be, du- I, yeah, I don't, I'm I don't, saying a team I, is going to be dumb enough to bite. No, right I, now. I think, I think you could very easily get like a three year, $50 million, $50 million deal. Yeah. Three year, 50 is perfect. Absolutely. Uh, he'll give you yeah. what you need. Um, I want to move on to the Grizzlies. There's a number of Grizzlies topics I want to talk about. First of all, um, John Morant's back. Uh, party in my city, once again, in Memphis. Um, he came sure. out there. I think he had a mask. I don't know if he was injured, but dunked on KJ Martin. Uh, had his daughter out there. Just um, I know we talked about it, but does John Morant's return uh, this soon, I guess, change anything for, for the Western Conference? I it, It's weird, right? Because the Grizzlies actually – perform really well without jaw in my mind they're a very well-rounded team even without him 
Um, and they've shown it. Like they've they've managed to stay afloat um, without him in two seasons in a row, and with him on the court, fully engaged. Yeah, I think it changed their hopes for them for sure. Um, they go from like legitimately in danger in the first round again to you know second round, possibly Western Conference Finals. Who knows? Um, yeah, it, he's a superstar. He changes the fortunes of. And prospects of any NBA team that he's on, especially the Grizzlies. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, I'll echo the same thing. It's kind of it's kind of scary, though, just to think if the Lakers manage to get that seventh seed. I would, If I'm the Grizzlies, I'd well, hate to play a team like the Lakers in the first round of the playoffs. They'll match, against a healthy Lakers team, they don't match up well. Yeah. yeah like it's it's going to be scary. But, I mean, of course, like you said, you add in John Moran, obviously – the guy might be on an All NBA team. He could be one of the six oh, yeah. guards on an All NBA team this season. Yeah, he's been great all season long. And despite all those mishaps and stuff that he had now, uh, you know, a little while ago, all that stuff is behind him now. So I, as I long agree. as long as yeah, as long as he's as long as he's listening to Jaw Rule's advice and doesn't let hip hop rule his life. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> That's what Jaw Rule said. That's what Jaw Rule said. I know, but it's. <laughs> right, go ahead, man. Yes, I do think he changes. Go ahead. <laughs> Have it. Uh, yeah, as, as long as John Morant is, uh, again, in the right headspace, um, I think. Ja Rule. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm confident Ja, ja will, you know, you know, I think they won a division title yesterday, and, and Ja was saying that's obviously great, but not their goal. So um, I definitely think it's going to be matchup based for the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, Ja Rule is just you. I need to move on from this topic because I just you just have this smile, bro. Um, similar Grizzlies topic. Um, not similar, Sussy. but on the, on the same team. We he's now um, accrued three hundred and thirty six thousand dollars in fines this season alone. Uh, in total, he's paid the NBA five hundred and fourteen thousand dollars in fines. So 336,000 of the 514,000 have come this year. He has 18 technical fouls, multiple suspensions, and a fine for shoving a cameraman. Is Dylan Brooks this character? Is this character good for the NBA? No, but I also don't know if the NBA has ever existed without one reigning menace. It, like for the past 30 years. It was Dennis, then whoever the hell the menace was, uh, Ron Artest, then it was, you know, there's always a pariah. Then, like, your Pat Bev's, your Draymond's is, whatever, and then now Dylan Brooks is, like, poised to take the crown. The Sheeds, whatever. I think that, like, there's always going to be one that takes that crown. It's Dylan Brooks's now um, that Pat Bev and Draymond are older and, you know, more calm. Um, I think it's just a fact of life in the NBA. I don't know if it's good, but um, it's just a fact of it. Uh, I'm kind of with you on that, too. It's kind of a toss-up. I, I wouldn't say that it's bad because, hell, it's probably selling more tickets. Damn, I can't wait to watch Kyrie Irving bust Dylan Brooks' ass. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's going to be part of my mindset, especially with all the, the trash that he talks in press conferences pre- and post-game leading up to whatever game or marquee matchup they might have with the perennial playoff team. So it's a little, it's kind of hard to call, but personally I do like it because all the guys you just mentioned, a big one for being a Laker fan, playing those Suns teams, Rob Job Bell hated Kobe and even close yeah. line. So like, that too. yeah, yeah, no Raja Bell. Yeah. Seeing those type of storylines form and develop within NBA players like relationship like, you know, Shea Gilgis Alexander talking about LeBron and how he doesn't really think his game is all that skilled. He's just big and athletic. I right. Got, and then, yep. That's smoke. I mean, I like the general attitude, like your Benedict Matherin's, like at the draft, like talking, like, you know, talking that stick talk. But something about the only reason why I'm like kind of hesitating is something about Dylan Brooks just annoys me, man. Because like it just screams right. fake tough. Right. Because he's, so, it's like, like fake tough as talented as any of those, like Rasheed Wallace was an all-star caliber player, you know, like, yeah, but I respected Raja Bell more than Dylan Brooks, Pat Bev more than Dylan Brooks. Like, I'm just like, eh. because they play their role. I think Dylan Brooks thinks he's a lot better 
than what he actually is. I think that's what well, it I is, right? Have, I like, think you have to play with that kind of chip on your shoulder, that kind of ego, yeah. to get to where you are. Um, you know, For I thought sure. it was funny. There was yeah. a video, you're, a video you're not wrong. the day um, from Dylan Brooks in Oregon, in an interview, and he said, I want to be the Draymond of this team. I want to be the Draymond for my team. Uh, do all the dirty work. I mean, he is. Fast forward seven years later, and he's feuding with Draymond, probably more hated than Draymond. Um, look, I, I, well, he's I, I, way more hated than Draymond. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's way more hated, Jerry. Right now, right now, yeah. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. Jerry was on the fence. I'm like, yeah, he is. Um, I guess, <laughs> yeah, I, the cameraman thing is what really turned me off. The cameraman shoving was just very confusing. Yeah, like, All exactly. Right, bro, this guy... This guy hasn't messed with you. What? Why are you just being a dick? So it was too much. That's why I'm saying he's trying way too hard for me. I'm just like, ah, mm. it's it's scre- like the entire Grizzlies team outside of Stephen Adams is kind of just like fake tough to me. You know what I mean? Like they're re- they really want to fill that niche. Uh, <laughs> they want to be like the grit and grind and Pistons with a couple of superstars. But I'm just like, eh, um, I, I don't know. The Suns and the it's Memphis fun. Grizzlies are about battling for the least likable team. For like they've doing this for the for the years now. Like here's here's yeah. my thing though. Know, like as as soon as Ja like touched down and everybody starts like well the Grizzlies organization starts putting those pieces around you know Ja Morant you obviously have to have an enforcer and plus taking the old Grizzlies teams like that kind of ruled the 2010s as being the grit and grind guys there has to be a face of the grit and grind Tony Allen in the 2010s was the face of the grit and grind he wasn't the best player. But he was certainly the best defender on the squad and the vocal leader. I think Dylan Brooks is really just taking a page out of Tony Allen's book. But he, he's obviously not a better, as good a defender or nowhere near the type of level that Tony Allen was at. But, hey, you get physical with guys, you get in people's faces, and you cause all this off-court hoorah. I mean, you can I think he's. I think he, I think he's taking the wrong lessons. Like, you, like – you know how Steven Adams called that secret, like, players-only meeting about Ja, like, a couple weeks ago? Right. Yeah. Like, I would like – Steven Adams, like, seems like the more natural, like, pick to me. I just respect him more. You know what I mean? Like, Dylan Brooks is, like – it gives off, like, little brother syndrome. Like, have you ever seen Warrior? He's like Tom Hardy in Warrior, trying way too hard. You know what I mean? He's like that. I got you. That's all. Or the yeah. guy with the mohawk. Brooks – They got a, knocked out. Brooks is a free agent this season, so I am kind of curious to see how, how that plays out, whether a team – He'll get uh, money. Goes for him, whether the Grizzlies. I, I think the Grizzlies keep him, but I'm curious to see what he gets then. Draymond said, the dynasty starts after you, you clown. I quote. So <laughs> let's see Let's see what happens. <laughs> um, one thing, I, another thing I wanted to get to um, this week. He doesn't get a lot of love, and I think he should. So I'm, I'm going to give him his flowers here. Um, maybe I'm a little biased. You can call me biased. That's okay. Shea Gilgis Alexander. Um, Sorry. 31 points. I think the exact number was 31 points, 4.8 rebounds, 5.5 assists, 1.7 steal, steals, and one block per game. The only other player to do that in NBA history was Michael Jordan in a season. The only other player. Jordan did it twice. Um, I, 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 I got I to gotta think about what I got to say about Shea. Uh, obviously, I saw him here when he was with the Clippers. Um, you knew he had potential, um, and, and you knew that based off the Clippers <laughs> having these secret meetings on who they were going to draft. Um, you know, they told Shea, "Don't you know? Try not to meet with anyone. We're going to draft you. We're going to, you know, we promise we're going to take you." Um, and then they had to trade him in, in the Kawhi Leonard Paul George trade. Which, again, looking back at it, if you get Kawhi and PG, you got to do it. Kawhi coming off a title, you got to do it. But Shea looks so good right now, man. He looks like a freaking stud. Can I ask Tamer, um, in retrospect, as like the Clippers writer, who would you rather have, Kawhi and PG or Shea, right now? Looking back at it now, no, like like fast forward to now, who would you rather have on this Clippers squad? Both Kawhi and PG at their current states, like PG's injured, Kawhi's his standard right now, or would you prefer to have, um, or would you have, or would you prefer to have uh, SGA? Uh, I, I think you'd still take Kawhi and PG. I mean, Kawhi, again, okay. is, is a multiple-time champion. PG is just – his body of work has been there uh, despite some of the flameouts. He's been okay. really good, really consistent for most of his career. So, like, um, it's just – I don't want to say it's a curse thing, but, like, PG was healthy for the most part. Outside of his leg injury, was really healthy for his career. And then he got here and he got injury prone for whatever reason. Um, no, and, and all these just happened at the worst times. Just I like I'm I'm just uh, like I I 
I think it's a relatively like hard discussion right now, to be honest. Between SGA um, and but two? I between SGA right now and those two, SGA alone has led the Thunder to like a damn near five hundred record on his own as well. So you know, well, they have right now, there. right they have now, there. Jalen Williams, Josh Giddy, they have some really good talent there. They're coaching. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying like by himself, by himself. I'm not saying that he's like you know leading paper clips and like a freaking snack bar. But you know, all the, we we talk about. Let's not talk about the Clippers like they're not one of the deepest teams in the league now. So no, no, you're right. All that you I'm are. saying is yeah. that that's why I think it's a question worth asking. That's I, 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 it, um, I think it's going to be fair. It's going. I think it's going to be worth asking for the rest of his career. Um, oh yeah, especially if he goes on to win win title titles, MVPs, um, something that Kawhi and PG haven't done with the Clippers. So, um, I'm I'm very old fashioned in that. Like I, you know, I'm a huge LeBron fan. I I I have the romantic in my heart. Really wants to root for teams to grow their homegrown talent. I want them to come up with a Giannis. I want them to come up with all those different things. And when they don't, it kind of like soils my feelings towards them. Like mm-hmm. maybe that's like as a Nets fan, what happened with them like twice in a row now, you know, the Clippers, I don't know if they can win a championship with this current duo. And I would almost prefer them if I were a Clippers fan to have the SGA on his own and like be able to have that legend. That hometown, well, you know what I mean. You know the so like you know, you you know there's potential there. Whereas Kawhi and PG, I think you kind of see them reach their peak. Um, we've right. seen what they can do. That's true. You had to you had to pull that trigger though. That's your I know point. that you had to. You had yeah. To. Just because Paul right. George is an All NBA performer, arguably top five in his position at the time the trade was made. Now he just came off an MVP season before he ended up a Clipper. So it's kind of like, damn, we're getting an MVP caliber player, and then we're getting the Finals MVP and Kawhi Leonard to. Hopefully take us to the promised land. Step out of the Lakers' shadow and be this, we're just as big as a franchise in Los Angeles than the Lakers at the current moment or something. That's the plan. That's what you're shooting for. And Do you want to gamble that on a 19-year-old kid is a question that you have to ask yourself as a front office rep. And obviously right now, like nobody kind of, you like Tomer said, you saw the potential. You think he could be a really good player in this league. But can any of us back in 2019, 2020, no. Every I'm not. The, the, the Clippers made the Clippers made an inevitable choice. I'm just saying right now, like knowing what happens here, what's going on right now, like would you want to trade PG and Kawhi back for SGA, for example? I mean, that's looking back at it now. I mean, no, I don't think so. I, I mean, the Thunder okay. are not in championship contention yet. Uh, the Clippers, healthy in my opinion, are. Like if they get somehow squeezed through a okay. first round and PG comes back, I think. You know the ceiling is the roof. Okay. So like anything is possible. I like I, I, from the beginning, SGA was that dude, and any, and any um discussion of him putting up great stats on a bad team, are done solved right yeah. now. Yeah. It's it they're yeah. done. They're done. The 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 Thunder are two three years away. I think we can agree, and they're damn near five hundred. They're a yeah. baby team. Chet Holmgren is going to be back. I, you know, SGA is that dude. Jerry, any final thoughts on Shay? I mean, nah, you know, I think from with the stat that you brought up to open up this segment, for the rest of the season, I'm going to call him Shay Jordan Alexander. I mean, the, <laughs> the dude's playing out of his mind. And hell, I think we could all agree that he's going to be an, on an all NBA team. Like, he has, he to, has to. That's JA. It's, he deserves it. His, his counting stats are on. And the way that he's popped this season, I know that he – I had him on my fantasy team last season, and he did great wonders for me. But this season, it almost makes you wonder if this is, like, just an outlier for him. It's that insane of how big of a pop that he made. I'm not saying that he and, can't and, keep it up, and, but it is an insane pop this season. And let me just add one, one of the crazier stats that I – because I was looking, at, looking up uh, this last night. He has the fewest three pointers attempted among like the top fifteen scores. He only takes like two a game, and I think he makes like under one a game. He's, he has, yep. he, he's insane. Yep. He's averaging thirty one points on less than one three per game. The only yeah, other guy doing that is like Giannis, because Embiid's making he's, one. He's just such a smart player, like in terms of attacking angles and knowing how to manipulate a defense to kind of just give him what he wants. Even in free free throw attempts, I'm pretty sure he's up there, like top five or top 10 in the league or so, but 
just how he creates his offense is is more. He's fourth. He's fourth in free throw attempts. Yeah, awesome. Like it's just very. I I love his game, and you know, guys, I tell you this all the time. I'm big on two way players, and for him to be mm-hmm. six seven and be a point guard, I know he can guard probably one through three in this league, maybe even four. So I'm I'm real comfortable. Like I love what I see out of Shea, man. Can I can I can I make like a very quick player comp? Like if we, you know you know that trend of like doing the um where uh someone is the Charmander, someone is a Charmeleon, someone's a Charizard of like players sure, like, like evolutions. Okay, okay. I feel like I feel like Shay is the Charizard to Darius Garland's like Char Charme- or Charmeleon. You know what I mean? Very patient handles, offensive game. It, it it it's not without the shooting, but like very very patient, like really really smart attacking for both of them. I'm gonna be honest. Um, I don't see it because Shea, oh, Shea, 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 I do. Shea in the mid range, like Chris Paul is called like the mid range god. Uh, DeMar DeRozan is called like mid range god. Uh, KD as well. Shea is getting to that territory where he gets to his <coughs> free, throw line, free throw line area. He's got that little little push off step back. That's money every time. He, I think he he, he operates it and controls the game a little different than Garland. Garland's more of a traditional. I'm talking scorer. about his hand. I'm talking purely about handles. I think that they're like very very. Uh, much in the same way, like I see Garland's handles like in okay. shape, like they have they operate the same. Is what I mean. I don't see maybe it, not like the, the maybe not the shooting profile, but like the the handles are very very similar. Very patient, not very spectacular, but their understanding of geometry on an NBA court, insane. Jerry, s- solve this geometric equation. Do you, do you agree with with, with Jerry? No, nah, I'm, I'm not with Julian. That. Who agrees with who? Dude, who agrees with, with who? Julian? My bad. My bad. <laughs> I, I know what you meant. I know what you meant. But not. I didn't. Thank you for explaining. I'm not really feeling the comp, really. I think, I think in terms of patience, we can make an argument that most smart point guards are probably like you know just as patient. Like I see when I look at Shea play and how he gets to his spots, it is very similar to how Chris Paul would play, or similar to how Demar Derozan. That's fair. I look at Garland like what a modern day like NBA superstar could do now with being a good three-point shooter and being able to create for your others. Because I think I think Garland is probably a better playmaker, at least when it comes down to, you know, pure assist numbers, looking at the averages, and if, how many points he probably accounts for. Jerry him. knows hoops. <laughs> um, it's just, it's just kind of like an observation, though. But I do I, – I feel like it's just a part of, like, another chain. Like, if Shea is the Charizard, we can call Darius, like, a potential Blastoise. You know, not to show my nerd side here, but that's that's what we can call him. I, I think it's like fire and water. And he's a he, he's he's a war turtle. He, he's a war turtle, bro. Sure. I, at this point, we just we who is Venusaur? That's what I need to know. Uh, uh Ven- no, Venusaur is Steph. Well, at this point, Pure, I don't know about that one. Steph is the no, no, three di- no, 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 the three different types of the same dude. Three different types of the same like scoring guard. I might go Trey Young. No, Trey Young is the Ivy Sword for that. Then, no, bro, dude, Steph's one of the greatest, bro. He he got to be like a legendary. He can't be. He's he a can't legendary, be, bro. Yeah, he can't be He's no Venusaur, bro. No, There's but it, 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 we're talking about we're, we're we're talking about evolutions. We're talking, let's move on. We're talking about evolutions. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's evolved from Venusaur. He's he's already up there. All um, right, that's that. He's like. He, yeah, whatever, whatever. Call Dame Venusaur then. I'm trying to find. I'm trying to think of a Pokemon with ranged attacks, but they all have ranged attacks. Anyways, Al. No, never mind. That's a terrible <laughs> one. Anyways, <laughs> we're done. We're done. Move on. Let's go. Um, I did want to jump into to uh, a few games that I had. Um, kind of games, kind of just opinion things. But I wanted to ask you guys: of the non MVP favorites, who is your MVP? The non MVP favorites. Who's the MVP? Like who's the MVP to their Who's the MVP to their team? Outside of the MB, the Giannis, the Jokic. Who's the MVP to their team? Okay. Um. Before he got traded, I would have said KD to the Nets. Um. Uh. Let me think. Um. Jimmy Butler's a good candidate. Um. I would even throw out Jalen Brown's name, despite Jason Tatum getting all the notoriety in Boston. See, but like I feel like that's like even he, though he's between up there. them, he's up there. They're Tatum, both Tatum up there, but I think. Oh, James um, Dame. 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 Okay. Yeah. Dame. I'm, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going with Dame or Steph. Um, <laughs> we're dumb. Steph is Steph isn't an obvious MVP candidate right now, but Steph. 
SGA. <laughs> like we. Well, I, I need you to pick one here. I don't need you to pick name five guys. Ah, uh, damn. You know, what? I'm 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 gonna go with Steph. He go. The Warriors go as he goes. Uh, I'm gonna go with James Harden. I think this has been an underrated season for him, not being an All Star and all that stuff. But he's averaging 21 and 10. I feel like he went from high usage, bona fide score to hey, I can still score. I can drop 50 some games, but I'm gonna give you 22 and 10 assists. Yeah, like definitely change his name. You know, Doc Rivers called him a hybrid, like a scoring Magic Johnson or whatever it was. You know, so. Woo. I'm going to go James Harden. Okay, I like that. Um, okay. I'm going to go Shea Gilders, Shea, Shea Gilders Alexander is, is my pick. Um, I just – I follow him a lot with the Thunder. He deserves, to be, he deserves to be on here. He deserves to be on that, like, MVP he list. right. Shea Jordan Alexander. Shea Jordan Alexander. SJA. <laughs> or, or, no, 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 A, A, Jerry. Jerry, this works better. The rhyme scheme works better. SGJ. I'm cool. There you go. I'm, I'm all right. As long as Shea Gilgis Jordan. Let's get it. You guys, you guys are ridiculous, bro. Um. So one thing, one thing I wanted, I wanted to to throw out there was, player of the week doesn't get a lot of love, and I know that guys have a lot of uh, guys have can have good weeks mm -hmm. that can get forgotten about. Um. So I wanted to ask you guys. I'm gonna throw this out there. Uh, I'm gonna throw different names of players out. You're gonna tell me how many players of the week honors you think they have. The closest one to to the answer will win. Um, so yeah, I'm just for player make, of the week for player of the week th in their careers. Player of the week honors in their entire career. Okay, how many they had? Obviously, you're not going to get a round of the money, but the closest one to the answer will win. Okay, so we'll name a few players here. Why are you doing like prices have... right rules or like just closest? I need to establish this right now. Uh, ooh, this is an interesting question. Do you want prices right rules? No, no. I'm gonna guess one every time, and that's boring. Jerry, do you want prices right rules? Nah. Okay, no prices right rules. Just closest to it, whether you're <laughs> one off, one over, whatever it is. Um, so we are going to start with Mr. James Harden. How many Player of the Week honors does James Harden have? Wow. In his no. career, I'm gonna. In his I'm career. gonna guess thirty-two. Thirty-two. I'm going to bump it up by 10 and go 42. Okay. Okay. Um, Julian, you win that. James Harden has 26 Player of the Week honors in his career. So that is 1-0 Julian right there. Okay. Um, That's a good baseline for me to kick Jerry's ass again. How many uh, Player of the Week honors does uh, Michael Jordan have? When did the NBA start making Player of the Weeks? I can um, right now, it started during the 1979-80 season. Oh, damn. Okay, that's a lot older than I thought. Okay. Um, I'm going to guess Michael Jordan. I'm uh, even clean 50. Okay. He has a lot of MVP, so I'm just trying to, like, sift through this in my head, too, you know? Give me the double nickel. I'm going 55. I'm, I'm going to go up again on Julian. Uh, Julian, what was your number? 50. Julian is two for two. Michael Jordan has 25 Player of the Week honors. Oh, shoot. You know why? You know why? It's because, it's because like, a lot of his, like, big Player of the Weeks, I feel like, came early in his career before, like, Rodman and um, he took time Scotty. Off. He took time off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot All of guys right. at the time you can probably give it to. So I'm like, maybe it's... More. Exactly. Well, and a lot of guys who like probably had like outstanding performances solo on a team. You know what I mean? Yeah, also, yeah, Jordan yeah. had a lot of great playoff games. I know, I, I know it was great in the regular season. Um, but I, I, yeah, I feel like a lot of it was focused on the playoffs. I don't know. I don't know how they voted back then. <laughs> Might be a little weird. I'm just going off what I see. All right. Julian, 2-0. Um, let's go with a famous one. Let's go LeBron James. How many Player of the Week honors does LeBron James have? 32. I'll, I'll go higher, 36. <laughs> Julian wins again. LeBron James has 67 <laughs> player of the week honors. It's, you know why? You know why? It's because LeBron like has played like on some ass teams. So they see these numbers. stats, especially early LeBron. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, tough, man. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Jerry. You're down 3-0. I'm giving you a lot of chances. There's a lot of chances. There's good ones coming up. Um... <laughs> 
Let's go with uh, Dwayne Wade. How many how many Player of the Week honors does Dwayne Wade have in his career? Twenty five. Twenty five, and how many, Jerry? Twenty five. Wait, wait, you both said twenty five? No, no, Jerry said twenty nine. Yeah, I said twenty nine. Twenty nine. Dwayne Wade has nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> he spent so many seasons injured, Jared. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> you have chances, bro. He's only up four 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 nil right now this time. Dude, how many how many plays do we have on this <laughs> Until you get one, man. Damn. Okay. <laughs> you go over. Let's roll. Let's keep going. Um Giannis onto the Kupo. How many players of the week does Giannis onto the Kupo have? Fifteen. Twenty-two. No, 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 no. Yeah, twenty-two. Giannis has twenty-one. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to clean sweep this game? I'm not a good guesser, bro. Like this isn't. Like... <laughs> I kind of want to see. I might just pull up like I know, like Dan Marley, just to see if you can get that. Five, ten. Um, let's go, Russell Westbrook. How many does Russell Westbrook have? <sighs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna let, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Jerry go first. I feel like he needs. Actually, do you, do you prefer to go second, Jerry? Uh, Jerry? What, what do you prefer here? You need a handicap. <laughs> yeah. I'm against for first. his hairline too. It's you guess what? You need fucking tilts. My bad. It's twenty eight. <laughs> It's 28, bro. 28, okay. 28? Okay. I'm going to stick with uh, 22 again. 21 for Russell Westbrook. (laughs) (laughs) Dog, Jerry. Jerry, he was playing with KD for so long, and then he had that, like, a couple of years without KD. I don't care about your logic, all right? (laughs) No. I was going to end this game, but I just want to see how bad this goes. Tomer, 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 I'm trying to help Jerry right now. Okay, maybe we need to help Jerry, you, Jerry, Jerry. Handicap of like two. If he gets within that two range, I don't know. I'm, just, I don't know. No, uh, no, 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 no. Jerry, Jerry, do you want to be helped this much, like a child? I'm How many Player that. of the Week honors does Kevin Love have? <laughs> Go ahead, Julian. <laughs> 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 Um, I'm gonna guess. Uh, give me, give me twelve. I'm gonna go one lower. Give me eleven. <laughs> ah, screw you, Jerry. Jerry's going full prices right now. Jerry's going full prices right now. Let me, uh, let me find the alarm signal because Jerry just won his first one. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry, uh, you, Kevin Love has three uh, Player of the Week honors. Uh, so Ooh. Julian went one, two, three, four, right. five, six. Before Jerry won one, is this a comeback? Hey, sweep me though. Hey, sweep me though. I want to. I want to see if you can get. One. I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go one more just to see if you can get this one. Um, I'm hot now, baby. We haven't done this one. Can you guys? Can you guys guess? Uh, we'll close up this. Can you guess Kobe Bryant's total player of the week honors? Kobe. Yeah. Um. I'm a. I'm gonna go with thirty-one. Okay. Uh, give me, give me 28. Jerry goes back to back. Is this okay. a comeback? No. Is this a comeback? No, it's not. No, it's not. Can we move on from this game, please? Uh, yeah, I yeah, killed yeah, yeah. Jerry yeah. this entire time. Uh, okay. I killed Jerry this entire game. Last night game, I just want to see how much you guys pay attention to the NBA. How much, how, how, how NBA savvy are you? Um... What is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11 players have played in every single game for their team this year. I need you to name six of them. Hey, I have two right now. One's Michael Bridges and the other is Julius Randle. Okay, those are both correct. <laughs> um, uh, I can tell you, Jerry, I will not know this. I'm going to rely on you. Um, is it, is Austin Reeves on this list? No, no. Austin Reeves has missed a couple games. 
that I know. Okay. Of. I've seen him miss a couple games. Okay. Uh, um, if it wasn't for the suspensions, I'd have guessed Dylan Brooks too. Um, there's only four more. Uh, I'm not gonna make you get all eleven. Just four more. Four more. I'm trying to just run through teams. I'm, I'm have gonna... either of? The... Wait. Have either of the? Has Jokic missed? No, Jokic oh. missed time too, right? Yeah, Jokic missed a little bit of time. I feel like Cam Johnson is right there with Mike Hale. Cam Johnson um, missed a little bit of time as well, I think. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of like either uh, Giannis missed time. Giannis missed time. Um, Has Drew Holiday? All the... I would tell you, you have named the only All Star on this list in Julius Randle. Okay. There's no other star on this list. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, it's not Holiday. Mark it was an All Star. Marcus Smart. He missed some time. Uh, he, no, he missed some time. You got a team. Uh, we got the team. Huh? Sorry, I was coughing. My as in someone on. As in someone on that team yeah, might have yeah, like yeah. made all the games. Um. Oh shoots. Um. Has Jason Tatum missed time? No, we named the only All Star on 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 that on that list, Jer. You are right. You are. Right. So both both of the Wonder Twins, I think, might have just missed one or two games or something like that. Um. Uh, someone in my uh no. Uh. This is tough. I knew. I feel like Trey. I feel like Trey Mann's on this list. Is that an official guess? I I I don't know. Tomer Tomer is freaking me out right now. I also don't want to guess a Clipper because I feel like Tomer is going to smack me upside the head if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, uh, the Clippers had so many injuries, so like I'm really scared to even pick a guy like. Yeah, but 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 Trey Mann doesn't really have any. Terrence Terrence sort of... Terrence. Man. Oh, geez, geez, Terrence. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um. Uh, this is hard. Uh, <laughs> this is really hard because we're we're going into like weird territory. Jerry, did 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 Plumley miss any time? Oh, he missed time in Charlotte. In Char- yeah. He missed time in Charlotte. Okay. Um. Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm just thinking of my team now. PJ Washington also missed time. Lamelo obviously. Missed the rest of the season. Uh, Terry Rozier missed time at the beginning. I don't think it's a Hornet at all, honestly. So we could rule out 15 guys in Charlotte. Uh, damn, it wasn't is- a net outside of my kale. Oh, wait, no. I'm going to guess Nick Claxton. Nick Claxton Bless is you. not one of them. Damn. Damn. Okay. Uh, This is hard, man. This is a yeah, dope. dog. You screwed there us are, over right now. There's a defending champion in here. There's, oof, I don't know how to just, I don't know how to just give this away without giving it away. Um. Okay. 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 I want to submit Kevon Looney. Should I? Can I submit Kevon Looney? Submit Kevon Looney. Submit Kevon Looney. I like that guess. Kevon Looney is up here. Very nice. Good call. I like that. Yeah. 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 Um. Three more. A three. So just got three more. Uh, da, 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 da. I feel like someone in either Oklahoma City or Detroit is on this list. I'm gonna save you time, no. Okay. Uh, let me just. I add, thought it's a I want to ask Tomer a question here. Does does at least one of the guys play for a Western Conference team? Oh yeah. So he plays for a Western Conference team. At least one of them do. That doesn't solve. One, two, three, four of them do. Four of them do. Uh, who's an Iron Man out west? Jerry, it's gonna be on. It's gonna be on an ass team. Um, it has to be on an ass. I'm thinking of what? a rocket for some reason. When you Same. Play. Um, was it was it Alpe? I feel like I've seen him in street clothes, like at one point. I don't. Have you? 
Uh, I know Jalen Green missed time. Um, what about Jabari Smith? Has he missed any games? Yes. Oh, fuck. Dang, Tomer's hey, it's hard, bro. I'm – ah, damn. Um, Jerry, has Christian Wood missed games? Can you tell? Yeah, He's on the map. He has? Three. Okay. No, 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 I, I know, I know, I know. Oh, okay. I know. I, I moved on from the Rockets. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, this is tough, bro. Like, I'm... I hate this game. This game is dumb. Um, <laughs> all right, I'll tell you. There, there, there's, there's, th- there's three guys from two teams you've already mentioned and skipped over. <coughs> from two teams that we mentioned and skipped over. Uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna go Jabari Smith because I don't remember him missing time. All right, put up Jabari Smith. No, he didn't. He didn't. Okay. All right. Um, you're warm though, Jerry. Jerry, to your knowledge, um, I'm just moving on from these teams because I don't know their rosters well enough. Um, talk to me about Anthony Simons, Jerry. Anthony Simons has missed a lot of time. Definitely. High ankle sprain out of the All Star break. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Jesus. God. Um, after after the Jabari Smith said, yes, he said we were warm. So maybe it could be a guy in Houston. But It has or, to be a guy in Houston at that point. Or at least – unless, ta- unless he's talking about like, you're talking about a small forward. I, it, like, it's going to be Houston. Um, maybe you could guess Alpi. I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to guess Alper and Changun. Damn it. How many guesses do we have left, Tomer? I thought you guys you guys would get it by now. I thought you guys were more NBA savvy than this. I'm a little disappointed Damn. line on line. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. <clears throat> sorry, sorry for our listeners that we don't know the Iron Men of today's NBA from the dregs. Um, <laughs> from the West, from the West, from the West. Um, I will say there are two rockets on here. And two Warriors on this list. K.J. Martin. Thank you. K.J. Martin is one of them. Who's the other Warrior? Um, Draymond missed time. Clay is missed time. Steph is missed time. <coughs> Jordan Poole is also missed time, I believe. Wiggins, Wiggins is currently missing time. Uh, Jonathan Kuminga, maybe? Rolled his ankle before that game. Didn't play. And there's still another rocket on on the list as well that we haven't got. Yes, there is. One more. I'll let you off the hook for the final one. Just get one more. Oh, thank God. Um, <laughs> My games are tough today. Damn. Not a lot of fans. Uh, I'm trying to think, like, of another name on the Rockets, bro. Like... <laughs> The Rockets. I'm sorry. Uh, Kevin Porter Jr.? Nope. Kenyon Martin Jr.? He already I, got No, it. I said that. That's, that's KJ. That's KJ. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And who's the Warrior? We still have, we don't know the Warrior or we don't know the Rocket. Wait, wait, wait. Let, let's, just, let's just start, like, naming, let's just start naming Rockets off of. It is a Warrior, of, like, a just... Cav, a Nick. A Pacer, a Celtic, a King, and a Rocket left. Jerry, I feel like Quickly's on this list, right? I don't know. <laughs> I'm putting up Quickly. So close. He missed one game. So close. Damn it! I, I um okay, 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 okay. Um whoa, 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 whoa. it's Quentin Grimes. Okay, never mind. Jesus, where you pulled that name out of your ass, Jerry? Um, okay, let's let's just let's just think of rockets. We have we have Frank the Tank. We have Boban. We have. Um, Wait, he said it was a he said it was a Pacer, a King, a Cav, a Nick, another Warrior, and another Rocket. So there's also somebody on the Cavs that we're missing that's been healthy. The the backcourt in Cleveland is ruled out. I know they both miss games. The front court is also ruled out. I know they both miss games. So All these starters. I'm thinking it's Isaac Okoro right now in my head. 
put up. I, thank God. Oh, thank God we're done. <laughs> oh God, what a terrible game. Yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> Not a lot that of was, fans. That was actually really hard. Uh, Jordan Wait, Poole has not missed a game this year. <laughs> Isaiah Hartenstein has not missed a game this year for the Knicks. Buddy Heald has not missed a game for the, for the Poole hasn't Knicks. missed a game this year. Has not missed a game. This I year. swear to God, Poole missed a game. Nope. Damn. I double checked it. Derek White on the Celtics did not miss a game this year. Uh, I almost guessed Derek White. Damn it. Harrison Barnes did not miss a game for the Kings this year. And the final, the Rocket, which I thought you would get, Jerry. Uh, Tari Eason has not missed a game for the Rockets this year. Oh. <laughs> My bad. I actually met him while we were in Utah, man. Right. <laughs> That's so, all. Yeah, so I thought yeah, uh, I trashy. Thought that, but I'll, I'll try to ease up on the game. Let's see. We were a little tough today. A little tough today. Okay. Uh, that's right. Oh, that was that. insane. Jerry, give me the all time draft. Let's knock this out. All right, man. You know, I got one specially for y'all. Came up with it in the think tank as we were going through the show. <laughs> We are going to ride with the Atlanta Hawks today. Oh, Lordy. Oh, Interesting. Lordy. Okay. Okay. Uh, Trash team. And I'm going first <laughs> overall, correct? Yeah, and I'm stuck in the middle. Oof. I mean, it's – I'm trying not to overthink It's pretty easily Dominique Wilkins number one overall, right? Yeah, no, no, yeah, there's there's no one else. There's no one else. Yeah, I didn't think so. I would have just had to call the draft. Um, oh, God, I'm hoping. <laughs> you know, I'm going to hope that he falls to me. Um, I've got to go. I've got to go Joe Johnson. Oh, that, that's honestly my favorite player in the Hawks. I've right got to go. I've got to go Joe Johnson. Oh, yeah. Joe Johnson. I really love Joe Johnson. Uh. That's down. I love, I love that. Damn. I, I love, love Joe Johnson. It's like you just hurt Thank me you. in the heart just now. But, uh, Thank you. Thank I'm going to do, I'm going to do Pistol Pete. And I'll okay. do Bob, Bob Pettit for my big. Oh, you son of a bitch. Damn it. I thought he was going to fall to me. Okay. That's fine. Um, Give me Dikembe. <gasps> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. I'm going to go with Trey Young and Josh yep, that's Smith. Oh, Josh Smith. Okay. No, 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 no. Tamir, uh, Josh Smith immediately negates Trey's shooting. Um, <laughs> well, Josh Smith will literally get you anything you want on the court. What are you um, talking about? Give me, hey, hey, give me, give me, um, give me Pete Maravich's uh, uh, backcourt partner, Lou Hudson. That's who I was going to grab next. Sweet <laughs> Lou Hudson, baby. You're a snake. Julian just he's, like Sweet Lou Hudson. Bro. He's dirty. He's dirty. He kind of surprises me sometimes. You know, like Sweet Lou Hudson. Sometimes I know my NBA history, baby. Uh, Except last week. Who was it last week? It was the Magic. Last the Magic. Week. Oh, the Magic. I, 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 I was up there with the Magic. Don't talk to me about the Magic. <laughs> that was the hell of draft that we had last week. I'm pretty sure. But uh, yeah, that was a really yeah, good draft. I agree. Now I'm like grasping at straws because right. I kind of thought. He, I didn't think he was going to think of Lou. Uh, I think I think Moses Malone played a couple seasons in Atlanta. I don't know if he was that good in Atlanta, but okay. Maybe not. You know what? Let me scratch. I don't want to. I don't want to submit that. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Lenny Wilkins. Okay. Ooh, and, I'm just uh, throwing it back. Yeah, man. Uh, one more, though. You know, for the sake of time, and I liked his game also in the 90s, I'm going to go Steve Smith. Big guard. Damn it! Oh, good pick. Good pick. Good pick. Um, okay. Hawks are... Uh, da -da -da. I... If I... Hawks are hard to draft. This is hard. Um, Hawks, are... Hawks are really hard to draft. Um, okay, so I have Joe John... I have Joe Johnson. I have Lou Hudson. I have Dikembe. Um, give me Dikembe, a supersized uh, partner in the front court. Give me Al Horford. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Underrated uh, player. These are my last two picks. Sure. I got Dominique. I got Trey Young, Josh Smith. My last two picks here. Um, <clears throat> I need a shooter, so I'm going to go with Kyle Korver because I can't think of another shooter over there. Hey, Kyle Korver's a good shooter. That's fine. Uh, I think you don't Hawks need a shooter. Really you have Trey Young. 
Yeah, but he's more of a point guard. I need to run shit. Um, you need like 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 a spot up, like a spot up, coming off curl screens and everything. Yeah, and you need, need a guy to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel, I feel. You know, like I four feel. In a row. I honestly don't know any other Hawks. I cannot think of any other Hawk right now. Like right now, my team, I got point guard, shooting guard, power forward, and center. I don't, who's a small forward on the Hawks? I don't even know. Like, Jerry, do you do you have a point guard right now? Pistol Pete could kind of run my point guard. Yeah. I mean, he. Pistol Pete can run your point guard, bro. He can one or two. He, he, I what what did he average at LSU? Forty four a game, something like that, without a three point line. That's bananas, dude. That's crazy. Like I'm, I'm literally at like. There's one guy that I think will actually do your team good, Tomer, but I also need him. So. <laughs> Also, but if you think back, you need a shooting guard. No, no, I have one. I have Corver. I've, I, have I, 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 I need, I, I need a power forward unless I slide Josh Smith up to the to the small forward spot and make <laughs> a power forward. Which honestly, you don't want I, Josh Smith on your perimeter, Tomer. <laughs> don't put Josh Smith on your perimeter. Don't do that. I, <laughs> don't I don't do that. Any, I don't know any other forward. Who, who else is a forward? I don't know. You're blanking, bro. You are yeah. blank. King. Like, I might, honest to God, and I'm not going to pick him. The only name coming to my head right now is freaking uh, Damari Carroll. I can't think of another of another forward name. Oh, God damn. That's I'm sad. not going to pick him, but I, I I can't think of another one. I don't know. Pick him. No. Fuck no. You coward. Pick him, you coward. Uh, I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to... Uh, I hate this. I'm going to have to slide Smith, Josh Smith up to the three. And get uh, Kevin Willis as my power forward. So I'm just gonna go with a just like a massive, just like yeah, a I don't know, body like a body. Oh, that's fine. I can't that's think of a forward. I'm not picking Demari Carroll. All due respect. That's solid. Um, ooh, you know what? I think. Do I want it? Okay, here, here's my thing, boys. Do I want switchability or do I want like a true distributor that's just gonna play that role? That's my thing. You were taking my Josh thing. Smith, you were taking Joe Johnson early screwed me. I did not think it was gonna go that high. I didn't. I didn't think it was going to take Joe Johnson that early either. I, I was. I was. Cons- I was considering one, Bob Pettit. I, I, I was consider. I was considering Pistol Pete. I was considering Bob Pettit. I was hoping that you'd forget. I was hoping that Jerry f- would forget one of those guys to come back to me. Um, but I, I like. I really wanted the ISO score. Um, you know what? Give me Paul Millsap. Mm. Paul Millsap. I'll, I'll go for switchability. Good, Pretty good. I'll I'll, like I'll 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 go for, I'll go for Paul Millsap. Yeah, good yeah, yeah. Pick. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's who I was thinking of. The other person that I was thinking of was a point guard. I don't know if Jerry's going to pick him. There's, there's I know you're talking names about. That I, I, have a I think he's overrated in Hawks history, to be honest. Um, I might but not he was be, good. I think I re- Jerry. I really wanted Steve Smith. I hate you so much. I wanted Joe Johnson. I didn't think it was going to go that early. I thought you were going to take Pistol Pete or Bob Petty. Do we want to trade? No, I'm good. <laughs> no, nah, nah, I'm happy with Joe. I'm happy. Give me ISO, Joe. I uh, I have a couple names that – because I have one more pick, and it's like a few guys. Because Lenny Wilkins or Pistol Pete can run my one or two. I'm cool with that. Steve Smith could be my three. Bob Petty could be my four. but Or I can just play like super small and take like a – because I'm surprised no one threw Jamal Crawford out here. Jamal Crawford is just pretty like damn good everywhere. I, I no, I, I still think I still I still I still think that there are a couple of Hawks ahead of him. Yeah, he, he has like, still some good yeah. Hawks moments though. Yeah. Hey, good Hawks moments, yeah, for sure. But if we're talking about entire tenure, we're talking about all time junk. Um, it's it's tough because like you have you have Dikembe who's like a pretty athletic center. He might not have a bag offensively, but he's a rim runner, right? So it's like he's a rim runner, dude. I need I need somebody to be able to contest with that. I think Bob Pettit, great big, but I don't think he's big enough. Yeah, tapers. Off. I don't think he's big enough. He's and not big enough. The, name, the, late, the other name that I think is like I, th- I feel like I have to take Dwight just because of the the mobility in Atlanta. He was still able to. Well, move. but here's here's the thing though. My strategy with the Magic was like with you taking Shaq. I'm not gonna try to tackle Shaq. I'm just gonna keep up with him scoring wise. So you go five out. So you have to alternate your strategy. Yeah, that's what you need to do. That's pretty tough. 
Uh, so let's see. Lenny at the one, Pistol two, Smitty at the three, Petty at the four. This this gets hard. Smitty's, right? Smitty's a good pick, man. Because I just, just like his game was so underrated. Take, dude, take the point guard. Take the point guard. I don't. Even you know who I, it is. I don't. I don't think I do. Can I? Can, can you pick someone so I can guess who it is? So I think I know who it is. <clears throat> I think I'm, I'm gonna take. Uh, I have two two other names on here because now it's because it's between Cliff Hagen or Walt Bellamy, and I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna do Hagen just because he's a go. Three. Go with Hagen. He's a great shooter. What's his name? I'm Cliff do, Hagen. Yeah. Yeah. Were you thinking about uh, uh, Doc Rivers? I was thinking about Doc Rivers. That's what I thought. Oh yeah, I like Doc too, but. Good defender and you know good playmaker in general, but good defender. Like but he was I I th- I, th- I think he was like Kenny Smith status and like he's just like up jumped like because good role of, because of like yeah. the name. Good role player. Good All role right. player. Run through the team. All right. Go ahead, Tomer. You're first. Oh yeah, oh, I was first. Okay, so I got um, first pick. Dominic Dominique Wilkins uh, will be my. I mean, I think I'm downsizing, but Dominique Wilkins will be my power forward center uh, along alongside uh, Kevin Willis. Uh, I got a big three, a big three who can't shoot. My 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 three uh, small forward is Josh Smith. Uh, and then at, at the guards, I got Kyle Korver and Trey Young. So it's Trey Young, Kyle Korver, Josh Smith, Kevin Willis, and Dominique Wilkins. I actually think my team is the most balanced, actually, now that I think about it. I got Lou Hudson running my point. <clears throat> um, we got uh, Joe Johnson at the two. Um, you have... <sighs> We have uh, Paul Millsap. Um, we have Dikembe Mutombo. We have Al Horford. Um, so Paul Millsap uh, runs like an inside the arc kind of three thing. Um, really, really switchable offense and defense for me, I think. Um, except for Dikembe. He's going to stay in the middle and we'll see who injures who between him and Dominique. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's pretty interesting. Like to have Millsap at the three is like odd because I have a. Like if I'm you, I'm kind of like, can he guard some of these some of these wing players? Because that's where he's gonna be at. But he could. His Hawks days, he was still mobile. He was still mobile. His Hawks day. days, he was very mobile, dude. Very very switchable. And oh. plus, like I can I can go like one through three, one through four, low key on like all four, all three of my like you know backcourt to um, small forward spots. Everyone's pretty switchable. Uh, and speaking of switchable, so is my lineup really. I have Lenny Wilkins running my one. Pistol Pete or Steve Smith or Cliff Hagen at the two, three, and four. I don't care where you put them, really. Preferably have Cliff at my four. It's going to be a small ball type of lineup, and then Bob Pettit rounds it out, man. I think I think we could play today's style of NBA basketball. We could run a pace and space kind of thing going on, and Pistol's just going to put on a damn show. So it should be really y'all fun. Better, y'all better go from the perimeter. You're not making anything. That team's not making anything against the Kembe. <laughs> hey, man, we got to stretch them out. You got to stretch him out a little okay. bit. That's what that, that's Dominique what is going <laughs> to... Dominique is going to shit all over him, too. <laughs> Damn. Well, those are, pretty... those are our teams. Uh, thank you guys for joining us for another episode of the I Got Next podcast. I'm Tomer. That's Julian. That's Jerry over there. Um, see you guys next time. Hope you guys enjoyed.